it up. I don't know. So let's, uh, I guess we just... A hatchery of here. Now, if the hatchery finishes, I get the theory. Not... The, the main purpose here isn't for... I'm kind of like... I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to... You could make a fence of spine crawlers, I guess. But it's mainly to spread creeps so that you can't keep making structures. I'm just kind of confused that Manny didn't respond. I think he just forgot. It's easy to get caught up because we haven't synced up. I'm just, at the same time, I don't want to just like backseat cast off his stream. Maybe I'll do it for the next one. We'll see. I just, he was, I thought we were going to wait. There must have been some miscommunication. Anyway, guys, um, dirty, dirty all in here for eggs. Hatch in the wall versus nice. Um, I will join that, but we've actually got a blind Nina game going at the same time. And it is likewise a very dirty build. So Nina has not hey, started. Gliggly, I'm sorry. I was at the end of game two there. I'm just done with my series. Okay, no worries. Um, cool. I mean, I, I, I just joined a cheesy one. That's cool. I thought we were going to get straight in, but that's fine. No worries, no worries, no worries. I think we would have actually timed out. Did Eggs win that? No, Nice did. So it's 2-0. I'm done. Nice holds on. The, uh, the hatch at the wall, the, the gasless doesn't quite work out. Nice I can't even lose a unit, man. He's so fucking <laughs> good. That's how those builds work. It's so funny because it's like people are like, oh, this is so bad. And you're like, well, actually, it hits so hard and so crazy that um, there's like so many layers to it. People are like, oh, they run out of steam, right? And you're like, no, no, no. He doesn't have gas. Like, this is going to keep going forever. Like, there's so many Zerglings, right? So you just got to like keep reinforcing them. We'll keep building units and... You know, it's just, it's it's got no follow-up, so it's, like, more all-in. So it's, like, one of those ones, like, people on the ladder die to, but Nice is so good now. I feel like he's so on point. It's, he's actually insane. Um, Do you want to just... Uh, I, I feel like Bly and Nina is going to finish game one really quickly. We could go straight into game two, because I'm in game one right now, and it should be done yeah. in the next two minutes. It's, I mean, it's Bly... So it's, he might try to transition, but basically he's done a proxy hatch Ravager build. Um... And he's hitting the natural wall end of Nina. It's also Everdream, same map, just opposite spawns from what you were just casting. So basically we've got uh, Ravagers coming forwards, a few Zerglings hit nice and early. Nina scouted very late, um, is now like de desperately walling off, but it's one of those things you're like, I have an Adept behind a wall and there's three Ravagers and a pack of Speedlings coming in and the, the Robo's in the wall as well. So Nina's like trying to wall off, trying to get out an Immortal, but the core's gonna go down and I think Nina's just gonna die. So this should be done in the next 15 seconds, I believe. Rip. Uh, Clem versus Nice is potentially next, which would be a six series. If, um, yeah, it could, it, it could be. It could be. It's up to you. I do feel like Clem may just like slap yeah, Nice. I, I do believe that Clem would monster mode that one. We just finished. Bly just took map one off Nina. Do you want to hop just straight into map two for this? Sure. Awesome. I'll I think we might get a more back and forth. Game. Obviously, that was a just good. Good countering all in there. Nina's gonna have to play a bit safer. I really, but I, I want, I feel like these two could get in a scrappy, awesome, hilariously weird game where there's like stalkers versus muters for 15 minutes or something like that, you know? Um, mm. So yeah. links in chat, you see it? Yep, I see it. Golden <laughs> wall. All right, there we go. The wall that is golden. Um, All right, uh, casting EPT cop. We've got Bly versus Nina, fantastic. We've got everything going. I think all the settings are good. Um, you guys can let me know how Maynard's volume is. Normally I crank him up a little bit, but I think it's crank actually it. okay. Crank up the jam, pump it up. Pump it up, pump it up, pump it up. Okay, I'll pump it up a little bit, there we go. And uh, you guys can let me know how we go. We're in the lobby. Along with Horus, Zodak, Rocklets, Iscar, uh, at least a bunch of these, I believe, if not all of them, are casting in other languages. So we might be the only yeah, English I, one on this. I believe we might have uh, Spanish and Portuguese potentially coming down. Uh, I think there was kind of a Korean and... name in the chat. I don't know if that's a Korean player or not, a, a Korean Maybe. caster or not. Maybe. Maybe there's like a Korean community caster who's got up nice and early to cast this, which would be cool. It's been, it's been an interesting day, man. How, how are your... I didn't get to hatch any of your series. Normally, I like to grab at least one of your series. Uh, your, no, it was uh, bad. I just I just got dumpstered. I just didn't play good. I um oh. I went Roach Ravager timings versus Terran two games in a row, and both times I clicked Roach speed when I was on like 85, 90 gas, not 100 gas. So Ooh. both times I was like attacking with like a massive non-speed Roaches going, 
when's it going to kick in? Oh, it's not started. I never started. Guess I'll like go in Festus and Broodlords. And then like I got really confused from there. I was like, the first game was actually going okay. I landed like some fungals where I would hit like 40 plus Marines. Um, and then I would, was like, I'm going to go Broodlord, Infester, Viper, Lurker, and then swap in a Ling Bay and Ultra all at the same time. And it turns out, even when you have 80 drones, it's hard to do everything at once, and you just get fucking killed um, by a Terran player who attacks with Marines and tanks in lots of places. So, not a great start for me, so I'm very happy to be casting some players who are a little bit better than me. Um, Only a little bit. Just a little bit. Speaking of better than me, down here in the bottom right-hand side... Totally, I mean, I guess they're both the bottom, but the right hand side, it is a Bly. And is he Razor Edge? He is Razor Edge. He is indeed. Same team as Zest. And on the far left, speaking of better of me, I think you can put both my uh, both of my ladder accounts together and my MMR still wouldn't be high enough to face Nina on the far left. Oh, Bly with the aggressive gold pace. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Look at Nina's. Nina, Nina's going a two gate adept pressure opening without scouting and he's like i'm just gonna wall off and open up my back door i i friggin love it i i actually yeah. love these backdoor expand builds you know you thermal showed them to us like maybe three weeks ago when the map pool first came out mm. and i was i was in love with it for then it's just how easy is that front ramp to defend and a full wall off talk about safety i really wonder does bly i think what bly is going to do though is mine out the middle minerals in the very middle of the map and just not even try to break the front wall and just go through the back and try to attack that low ground natural I actually would love that. I was going to say that Bly is going to go for uh, Ravages pretty quickly, I feel. But, um, you know, obviously Ravages are very gas heavy rather than mineral heavy. Or <laughs> actually, the Roach and the Roach is as expensive in minerals and gas when it becomes a Ravager, right? It's like 100, 100. Mm. So, um, needs a lot of both basically to make this happen. But a good number of Rav Ravages really will be able to bile down that wall of Nina. But Bly definitely expected a natural down here. He expected a low ground pile and expected a low ground gateway. Yeah. And these two adepts, he's like, oh no, this is a bad start, strategically at least, for Bly. It is still winnable, but, you know, definitely a bit of a rough start, not what he expected. One base robo, like, that is the best here for, for Nina. Don't even go for the Nexus yet, just be like, oh, okay. Because as long as Nina has enough army to defend this ramp, can go down and then just deny this gold base from behind the minerals. So as long as right now you see, hey, there's no third hatchery, my adepts are going to get to do a little bit of harassment right now. And it's one base versus one base. Any damage I do is just a big fat bonus right now. That's a 16 drone zerg. Yeah. Yeah. And any drone you lose when you only have like sub 20 drones is just, a, you know, all that worse. So the two adepts do go down, but five drones die. And I think that if you lose two adepts for five drones, you're always happy about it. If yeah. you lose two adepts for five drones and they only had 16 to begin with, hell yeah. Now and I really like the adepts ravages. here. You know, I really focus on stalkers a lot when I'm in a situation, but the Immortal does the anti-roach. You just need some anti-zergling, right? Because it's the Ling reinforced behind the Ravages. So mm -hmm. I love that Nina's like, oh, I'm just going to make adepts, make some batteries. Once this Immortal's out, it can start pushing the Ravages back. And don't get me wrong, they'll still break through eventually. Ooh, just got to keep those adepts alive. Oh, no, Nina, Nina, you cannot lose that red hit point adept. It's so important. Every little bit of damage you have here is sacred. And the shield battery does get some healing down. Nina pulls back. Got to get in the choke point. The Zergling's getting a bit of surface area there. But remember, Bly just doesn't have that much of a reinforce. This is such a small army still. And picking off gateways is important because it's limited production for Nina. But it's, I mean, it's all in as drone startup. So it's like, hey, I've got the gold base. If I can keep up the pressure, maybe I can mine the gold. But the adepts say no. Yeah. The, the adepts going to make sure that the Ling contingent here of Bly doesn't get too far in. Of course, the Immortal does the rest here against the Roaches and Ravages. Bly is... You know, getting some chip damage in on those structures. If he gets the cyber core, that's great. Any gateway pick off is fantastic as well. Meanwhile, Nina has got some mm. adepts on the south side here. There's gold mineral bases, kind of doing what you expect. The oh, you but know, look at that. The minerals from behind. Nina's so smart, dude. That she says no. The adept is just like fuck off. <laughs> I'm, I'm keeping this closed until you bring a ravager here. One's on the minerals. One's on the middle. Oh my god. Yeah, Nina. Nina is just. This is textbook. This is such a clean game from Nina. I feel like this is such a smart build against Bly, and it's it's preempted what Bly does. How often do we see people try to play stock standard against Bly and struggle? Yeah. And even if they win, they have these close hard fought series. And Nina's like, Nah, I got the anti Bly build right here. I lost game one, sitting on my haunches a little bit, resting. And uh, now I've got an immortal drop going across. Finally, that middle will open up soon. But that adept, she's put so much time. Yeah, now there's a prison with double immortal in it, and that is going to be a bad news for Bly here, as his army is pretty much just Ravages and yeah. a queen. 
You know, like, these two immortals in a prism just don't care about that. Yeah, they're going to go straight across and hit the economy. This one adept looks like she will barely go down. But uh, yeah, so one queen, two roaches in production off the gold up against an immortal drop. So the immortal drop could hit the base and just win it there. For now, mm -hmm. it's going to stay here at the tall grass. Um, that adept does go down at the choke point, but the immortal finds the drones. Yeah. And uh, likewise, a couple of roaches. So these try to save themselves into Ravager cocoons. In fact, Fly does save that uh, one roach turn into a Ravager, amazingly enough. Nina trying to go for those volleys with that extra bit of armor there on that cocoon, pulls it back up to full health point, uh, that, full health that, unit. That's how nature works, by the way. Like, you can find, like, yeah. a caterpillar turns into a cocoon. It's, like, morphing into a moth. You can, like, kick that cocoon, spit on it, hack it up a little bit. It can be, like, literally just together by yeah, a, a single mean, thread. A few years ago, I was a 12-year-old boy, and I fell off a bridge, and I broke every bone in my body, but then I just turned into a man cocoon and popped <laughs> out with a beard and dread dreadlocks. That's it, man. And, uh, and full health again. I'm good the to go. Healing, the healing stasis chamber, you know? Oh, that force field! <laughs> Nina! You can't leave! Once you come in, you can't leave. You know, Nina, actually, I have seen do this sort of move so much more than any other player in StarCraft 2. Um, we used to be big practice partners all the time. Me and Nina used to play so many customs for so many years. Um, and, and Nina was one of the most frustrating players. Like, I, it was great practice for getting tilted. Because even in customs, like, Nina was literally like, I was like, why is your door always open? And, and, and Nina's just like, oh, that's actually on purpose. I do it on purpose so you run in, and I have the sentry hiding on the high ground so I can trap your lings inside and then warp in units and kill them. <laughs> and I'm like, who does that? You're such a fucker. Like, who thinks to do this shit? This is, you're not meant to leave your door open and, and bait Zerglings inside your base. But Nina would do it every time and, like, actually trade really well. And I was like, oh, my God, you're so annoying to play against. You know, Nina is all about just, just screwing with the opponent and doing fancy micro, and, and I love it. Very cool to watch. Uh, speaking of which, a, a pretty big brain maneuver there from Bly to just get a bunch of links through that back door of the Protoss. You know, Bly has mined enough minerals down on his side of the map to actually get through that back door. But the uh, Lings actually got trapped there by that force field, and Nina once again trading amazingly. Bly's in such a terrible spot right now. There is zero advantage here for Bly. Mm. But, uh, it, you know, Bly is one of those guys that does have a bit of a fantasy GG timing. He just, he sticks around. He's a warrior. He yeah. will fight tooth and nail down to the last, down to the last man. Oof. Yeah. Uh, fighting tooth and tail, some would say. Um, oh, click tooth the drones, tail, click yeah. the drones. They're stacked. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, oh. I mean, getting a Ravager is pretty tasty as well. That Colossus has taken a bit of damage, but, I mean, he's only up against... Uh, that Colossus is only up against one Roach, one Ravager, and one Queen, and that is not really an army at this phase of the game when Nina continuing to amass, you know, those gateway units, even getting a Stargate right now because fuck it, right? You know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, are we streaming the same game, people in chat? GG, well played there. Uh, we're casting the same game. So. We're casting the same game. I'm just yeah. advertising my friend's stream. The multi-link is not a, this is how you watch the tournament and browse different games. You can go yeah. through the Twitch StarCraft 2 directory, or you can look at the Team Liquid sidebar is also a really great way to do that, in fact. Um, Are you advertising my stream? Because that's I'm advertising your stream here. Guys, oh, this, is the, this is the X5 underscore pig hype stream. Guys, this, this is, is like, the, the the main train right here, where we're all train. hopping on the train to the main army with that this main the, odd link. This is the pig hype, like honest trailers. There's like, <laughs> if you want to see a guy with really big teeth make sex jokes on Twitch, <laughs> <laughs> follow X5 underscore pig now and subscribe today. <laughs> so that's 1-1 one, one now, right? Game three? Yep. Oh, yeah, Game yeah, three, yeah. Simulacrum goes up. Do you want to make an innocuous comment about how the opponent played well and get timed out from chat? <laughs> Subscribe to my stream now. <laughs> Only happens when I lose the game, funnily enough. When I win, you never get timed out for complimenting my opponent. It's, it's a weird pattern I've noticed. <laughs> oh, good time. I'm glad we're co-casting together. I was actually like really low in energy and I felt like my casts were pretty shit for like the first... Um, couple hours like just because it's 5 a.m you know mm. out of bed rolling out and i'm just like oh god i'm, I'm like picking crusts out of my eyes and, and it's still dark you know i have to turn the lights yeah. on the house to get around i'm like putting toast in making a coffee and the coffee tastes like shit and the toast is like dry and i'm just like ugh. <laughs> i feel the it's same like way man day. 
it's like i think it's i think this is such a good thing that it falls on this day because it's such a, a thing i can look forward to i can be really lazy on sunday and chill out it's my day off and yeah. i know i can come back and just shoot the shit with you and it's the same thing like i <clears throat> i was really lazy with like getting stuff organized but i'm like oh no it's just i get up i play ept and then i get to cast ept with my with my friend this is a, a fun easy day the, the the content flows and if one of us is a bit tired it doesn't matter the other one will perk us up by saying inappropriate things very quickly indeed and uh let's get into the appropriate part of this game which is the player introductions currently tied one apiece both players very very closely matched north america versus europe we see it a lot in these cups in the top left here the ukrainian zerg the wild man and display on fire from razor edge gaming it's got that lovely ukrainian flag there next to the hatchery yeah the nation some national there. pride and down here in the bottom right hand side of course representing uh north america and american canadians everywhere those crazy people in minnesota and uh, north dakota it is mm. nina yeah, North Dakota. Actually, I've um, I listened to some American podcasts, specifically like the Daily is one that I listen to a lot. So I actually feel like I have a good bit of American news. Oh yeah, but they're like it's it's a the Daily is like a New York Times thing, so they concentrate like pretty heavily on New York and coronavirus and that sort of thing. I wonder how it's going in North Dakota. Um, I mean, is. it's it's just it's not as cold right now is it there right it's it's, it's no, kind yeah, of coming it's out up. of winter it's starting to warm mm -hmm. up but i guess you know you've got people a bit more spread out not as densely populated not as much of a concentration of wealth right whereas like you know in america right it's 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 california and new york obviously new york more so but they are testing about three times as much which does inflate it but you know i mean it's just foot traffic in new york it makes sense it spreads so quickly right in yeah, australia it was insanely packed um, together so like everyone's so packed in in new york it's a very overpopulated well, not overpopulated but just really populated series. very dense isn't it yeah it's yeah. like it's a nightmare for cities like hong kong and stuff where you know they're so densely yeah, populated Seoul, it's oh, yeah. crazy so i mean in sydney it's also wealth right it's the people that travel internationally that all brought it back it's why so many politicians and famous people have have contracted yeah. it generally um, in, in australia the uh the concentration is is bondi in sydney like massive mm -hmm. concentration that whole waverly council is like this rich little bit in the eastern suburbs next to the beach is like the absolute epicenter of the australian outbreak of coronavirus mm -hmm. so we're like oh man can we just build a fence around the rich suburbs like god damn like it is <laughs> so much higher there because everybody came back from their holidays and their ski trips in italy and all this sort of stuff and uh yeah things things are obviously slowing down thankfully but um just interesting yeah. to see for anyone that doesn't get Australian news, I mean, obviously, everyone's so concerned about their home st cities and home countries to a lesser extent um, with all this stuff going on. Right now, at least in my home state, if anyone gives a shit, I know I certainly do, um, they're crushing it here in South Australia. Like, it's yeah. it's gone down to sometimes, like, one or zero new cases a day. Like, it's Fantastic. actually... It's getting way better in South Australia. They've really yeah. locked it down very quickly, and it's a smaller... You know, you know, Adelaide has, like, a, over a million people in it, like, maybe 1.5 or something like that. Yeah. But it's still like a smaller city compared to others, and it's Minnesota, nicely so. spread out as well. Like yeah. it's, it's actually yeah. it's not it's not a cramped. I and mean, that's a lot of Australian cities are quite spread. We have a lot of space, but Adelaide's like nicely spaced, right? Yeah. So stuff's looking good in South Australia. Sounds like Sydney it's slowing down as well, apart from Bondi, which we need to fill a build a fence around. Uh, Pig's <laughs> basically saying eat the rich, um, which is a sentiment I see on this on social media every now and then. Yeah, Pig man. Clearly, uh, also, <laughs> also white men, hetero people, uh, people that eat meat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so the adept goes down of Nina. Did a little bit of a uh, you know drone harassment rather than you know serious damage there. Ooh, this oracle. Ooh. Oh no. Oh, oh very nice. Um, worth it. Well worth it. Always getting a queen early. It's one fifty minerals. It's kind of like killing three drones in terms of mineral expenditure. And that's actually a big thing because, I mean, remember Bly sent that Captain Captain D head across the map, blocked the Nexus for a while, but his opening was not the smoothest economically. And you can see he's got a lot of lava there, not enough minerals to sink into it because he really wants to shut down any follow-up damage with the early spore crawlers in each base and those three queens. But now, 10 Zerglings on the way. So I think Bly wants to try to make sure Nina can't get a third. And um, that's going to be a very delayed third for sure, if, if that Zergling count escalates a little bit more. But as it is, I think Triple Oracle looking fantastic. Up on the worker count is Nina. Going to go for the Queen again. Very mm. aggressive. And Nina is trying to get some real bang for buck from these Oracles. But like you mentioned, it's double Stargate. It's going to be tons of Oracles coming in here, like not just the three. Ooh. It's going to be a lot of Oracles from Nina. That third base. 
Oh, yeah, lots of links here. Adepts exposed. A third Adept coming in. They're packed in together with a probe. But it looks Ooh, like enough links from Bly to win the fight. But the Oracle Ooh. comes on in. The Oracle tax. That's almost a bait. Every time Zerglings commit to a fight, it's like it looks so good and the Oracle gets there and it just like sprays goddamn anti-Zergling raid bug spray on the face and they just evaporate, man. They all just flop on their back, their legs start twitching. You're like, what? And all the Adepts always survive in deep orange or red. So um, you could see Bly kind of looked away. It was like, cool, it's a good fight. I got this. There's no Oracle. Looks back and all the Zerglings are dead and the Adepts are alive and it's like, Gah! You know, those Zerglings would have been such a better resource for map control. Now Bly, very blind, has to build more Zerglings to, to keep some map vision. Yeah, he certainly does. He's got Lair, so he has the ability to go on a tier two and, and get some more convincing units here. Obviously, keeping keeping the queen count high, getting some spores up are going to be pretty important. Oh, Bly going for the infestation pit here. Yeah, Knight of Swarmhost, I guess. Wouldn't be surprised to see that. You can go regular um, Swarmhosts, but you'd want to go a 6th or a 7th Queen, especially against Triple Oracle, um, because otherwise you can't get out there. Now, what <laughs> what Bly doesn't realize is Nina's actually playing a style Nina's very good at. They'll be like, oh, Nina's trolling with Mass Oracles today on stream. No, guys, Mass Oracles is just good. <laughs> it's just a really <laughs> good way of playing PvZ, and oh, the Overseer's going to take a while to see it. Does see one Oracle barely, but doesn't catch the others. So they're going to hit that third... And uh, that's a big Oracle time. What is that, seven? Oh I feel Lord. like I feel like if you want to go Swarm Host near you know, Nidus, that's a, one of the worst things you can do against Double Stargate, right? Because the yeah. the uh, the Oracles can just split up even and deal with the... I like this. I like the Spire a lot, but to finish my thought, the Oracles can just split up and gun down Nidus Worms because a lot of people uh, think that the Oracle attack is an attack. It's actually a spell, so it doesn't give a yeah. shit about armor. Like, it'll just cut through that high armor, burrowing Nidus Worm and gun it down does not care at all these queens come down nice transfuse but i mean you see what they don't care about spores the drones refugee hunters oh, right oh. here and unfortunately that is oh god this Ooh. is so much damage i mean he's keeping the drones alive Bly's doing a good job of crisis management right now but with no queens out i don't think it matters yeah that's the thing like uh, two or three oracles of nina go down but as long as the spore dies I mean, the oracles are out of juice though oh nina yeah Get out there. i mean you've forced three workers of drones onto one base you've already done so much mining damage mm. normally the rule if your opponent's on a third with probes on it and you as a zerg are surprised by these oracles you don't have any response is you want to be able to survive have the oracles leave and be at 60 workers um bly was on like 43 and they were all in the main base that's effing terrible um like it just <laughs> it was too much of a surprise if your opponent hits you with five oracles by surprise and you're in Bly's position he'd be fine but that was seven and then an eighth and a ninth rallied in during the evacuation and that's just too much damage so uh now you see nina saying oh i'm ahead cool like let's go you know 14 roaches being built off 54 workers there is a fourth hatchery uh, basically Bly has got to scrap together a defense hold this build another 35 workers whilst not losing any to the oracles and somehow get that his is, way back into yeah. this game and also pull a rabbit out of the hat and escape from uh, from a straight jacket while underwater. It's a, it's going to be a little bit of a Houdini play from on Bly if he can actually mitigate this attack and also recover that economy. See, the Oracles are still here. They've regenerated hit points, or rather energy points. So they're turning down their sights on these Queens, gunning them down. The Roach is also dying pretty quickly here to these Oracles, but managing to get through a lot of the Gateway Quotient. Phoenix yeah. is showing up a little bit late to the party, but they will pick up the straggling Queens here. Already up to six Phoenix, and you've got no Queens, no Hydras, right? So mm. it's a desperate Roach counterattack. Um, this is where, you, I mean, I would say a single Void Ray would be amazing, but you don't even really need it. I, I also wouldn't mind continued Phoenix production. I think at this point, I guess it's kind of awkward, right? Because if you end up on Mass Oracle and Mass Phoenix, your army's a little bit poops. Um, mm -hmm. Instead, it's Stalkers and going into Colossus, but... It does feel a little bit like there's a bit too much supply caught in not the greatest units for Nina, where like I want these Phoenix to be on the warpath. Like I really feel I they should of, be hunting overlords right now in the main. I kind of just want plus one attack and blink, honestly. Um, yeah. Which I think Nina might be going towards with that. Uh, I mean, I think it's almost certainly charge, right, mm. at this point in the game. Well, but actually, I think blink would actually be a really good idea. It's it's Nina, so always expect blink when anyone yes, else would go charge Nina. right nina oh, yeah <laughs> nina nina is a blink protoss um Hell nina yeah. just wants to micro things uh corruptors do get spotted roaches come forward they're gonna try and click on the colossus Bly doesn't afraid but uh the force fields say you should be afraid a few roaches try to distract in the mineral line um oracles phoenix colossus stalkers uh the roaches Bly, ever focused in the chaos i would be so afraid 
But he's like calmly focuses down some units and he's thinking about his transition. His corruptors are hunting the oracles and I it's going to be more roaches and ravages. Okay, yeah. So the, the, the dream here for Bly, right, is your opponent's on Stalker Colossus. If you get enough corruptors to get rid of the phoenix and the oracles, slowly pick these off a few at a time. And then you just have enough Roach Ravager and you come in with a flank and you like bile down this army. Stalkers don't do the greatest damage. The upgrades aren't that amazing. Like there is there is this like kind of hope for Bly, but it basically all leads to when the fight happens, it needs to be a sandwich. He's got to come in from two or three sides. He's got to land Biles on the army and he's got to hope that the army composition doesn't change. Uh, and that's the problem because Immortals are being added in. And just in terms of raw army count, even if the composition doesn't change, I think I'm dreaming. I might be hyping up a, a dead <laughs> an animal's like bleeding on the on the ground dying. I'm like, he, he can win the race, guys. The horse, if he just gets up, <laughs> comes back this to life. Gazelle, this wounded gazelle could force this lion to fall off a cliff. <laughs> uh, but no, the, you know, you're, you're, there there are options for the Zerg, but it feels like at this point Nina would have to throw pretty hard. Mm and seems to be like a step ahead the tech shifts of Bly. I mean, Bly's making a lot of links right now. Obviously, that's a little bit better against a lot of stalkers, but look oh, at all no. the force fields available to Nina. Like, every time Bly tech shifts, he's like, okay, Corruptors. Nina's like, all right, no more Colossus. I'm making Disruptors. Look at Bly's, Bly's like, creep okay, spread. Lings. Nina's like, okay, here come force fields. You know, it hmm. seems to always be a step ahead. Oh, no, the tip's getting cut off this creep spread. It was one one creep tumor that made this way across the map. Oh, big Biles! Oh, my Lord! The Bile dream! Yes. The Biles connect with a lot of sentries, but they're still alive, which means they can still force field. Uh, one Stalker gets picked off there. A big recall from Nina because of the Corruptors. Uh, forces the Corruptors to leave, but also likewise forces Nina to slow down a little bit. She's going to try and catch these Corruptors on the retreat. Get back here. One more blink available. Rev. We're going to rev him? Yeah. Revelation does go down. Stalkers come forward. I mean, it's, it's so funny because you could see the way Bly was corrosive biling. He was putting it so far in front of the Stalkers, he was preempting a blink on top of his army. Because he knew that Nina is so far ahead in army that Nina can just blink through the Biles on top of his force and win. So he's got to put Biles in front where the where the blink would go so that Nina can't jump on him, which is like, yeah, okay. Like, you're, you're having to try to preempt what's meant to be the bad move for Protoss and, and counter it ahead of time because you don't have enough stuff. Oh, God, this mm. is so rough for Bly. Uh, he's got a lot of Banelings here, but no Baneling speed you know, and a lot of Ravages to break down his Force Fields, but he's not really doing that right now. He's concentrating on Corrupted Control, meanwhile losing a few of them. And with this Disruptor showing up for Nina and all these Blink Stalkers and almost plus to attack about the finish. Yeah. This just looks so bad for Bly. Nice Disruptor shot. Grabs a few Banes, does get caught. Uh, Banes on the other side try to get in. They get completely cleaned up by Stalkers. And the micro from Nina, so this is one thing. Every fight I look at of Nina, I'm like, yeah, I would have lost my Colossus at the start. Nina is always focus firing with the Stalkers and shifting the Colossus back. Comes back in, focuses Roaches, pulls back as the Corruptors come forward. There's a lot of Colossus babysitting and great Blink Stalker focus fire. It's one of Nina's big skills. Uh, interestingly, a few Phoenix coming in here, I think just to try to buffer for it, I guess. Um... You know, Bly is, is, as ever, a goddamn wizard at hanging in the game, buying time mm. with backstabs, forcing it to the next stage. He's like, ah, yeah, it's somehow it's 66 drones. It's starting melee and a greater spire. So we're going to see a Broodlord transition, which is perfect against Disruptors. I would say one of the big things I've seen as a weakness in this matchup for Nina historically is uh, Disruptors. Nina stays on Disruptors far too long and just dies to Broodlords. Namshar's done it to Nina in past EPTs. Um, I have almost beat Nina <laughs> occasionally on the ladder in games where I feel like I shouldn't just because the Broodlords, um, she can't really fight into them with the Disruptors. So it forces her into a multi-prong game where she's got to backstab a lot more and it mm -hmm. slows things down. So I really like that this time she stopped at two Disruptors. She hasn't kept massing them and she's really taking that threat seriously of the Broodlord transition. Does still have those 10 Phoenixes as well, which aren't the greatest anti-Broodlord unit, especially when the Corruptors are here. But uh, the count is getting thinned out. In come the Banelings again. Ooh. No Baneling speed from Bly. He's only just started Baneling speed. And Stalkers aren't that badly, uh, you know, that bad of a unit to have against a lot of Banelings. So they can tank quite a few hits. Yeah, Bly's been down on economy pretty much all game uh, and is also four and a half thousand resources behind in the units lost. So definitely an awkward position. Um, I mean, we always gush about Bly because other people bend over, you know, they fall over and die. They bleed on the floor. He has that ability it's like where um, sometimes you get an ability as like a warrior or something in like an RPG yeah. type game where you can get to like zero hit points, but you don't die and you actually fight harder for a little bit before you fall over and bleed out. And I feel like Bly has that 
to the epic heroic version. He has like the most powerful. He gets like yeah. triple strength bloodlust when he gets down to one hit point, and then he hangs there for another five minutes before he eventually dies. <laughs> I think Bly uh, realized as a child watching Dragon Ball Z that if Goku sat down and didn't get up in season one, that the series would have ended a long time ago. And, and these Phoenixes, like I said, they, they aren't the greatest anti-Broodlord unit, but when there's no Corruptors, they will absolutely deal with them. And they get actually three or four Broodlords of Bly there. And the Broodlords are, you know, make no mistake, Bly's only lifeline. If the Broods go down, <coughs> his army does not beat Ninas. Yeah, this is oh, rough. Nova! <laughs> Ooh. over. Ooh. over. Weaponized Tide Pod to the face of that Zerg army, and uh, Bly unfortunately does have to do the Tide Pod challenge at the end there. It was like six Ravages and a few Banelings going down to that. There's a Tide Pod Jeez. covered in cinnamon. So the cinnamon challenge as well at the same time. Oh my god. Ooh, that's a tough ingestion. I've taken off my, I was wearing my cap because I was, I, I got up, I actually did coaching before the stream uh, this morning mm. as well. So I was up super early. And I was like, I'm not shaving. I'm not putting fucking hair product in my hair today. So I put on my my, Lol. my pretending I'm not bald. <laughs> I'm so jealous oh, of you okay. right now, Maynard. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. I, I want a little bit of hair, man. I do have spare. <laughs> I'm gonna have to I steal have a dread. We'll have to do a do a goal. Purchase a dread mm. off Maynard at the next event. <laughs> it's, it's it's mainly on my head, but if you want it from anywhere, you know, you, you're a bro. I got you, uh, my man. Um, so. I realized the little metal pin in the top of the cap was getting pushed down into my head from my, I was like, why is my headset hurt today? And I was like, oh, okay. Cap and headset combined is not really the best way of doing it. Um, speaking of hair, that's actually how a lot of my headaches happen where I'm like, I put a head, like I'll just start the stream, put a headset on, but I won't have like, like I'll have two dreads stacked on top of each other or something and they'll be pressing into my skull. Mm. Like I need to make sure that all my dreads are uniform, spread out and flat. Because if there's two dreads that have like crisscrossed, like I've crossed the streams, Ghostbuster style, but crisscrossed the dreads. Oh no. And they're stacked on top of each other with a headset on top of it. It actually can give me a headache really quickly, like within the hour. I can start getting a really bad headache. Yeah, I feel that. That's um me. that's that's really annoying. I think um yeah. yeah. That's why I like I really love a, a good, comfortable headset. This this new virtuoso from Corsair is doing very well. I'm really enjoying the wireless. Um I was wondering why it just depowers so quickly um and i learned that if you leave the wireless on so it's constantly trying to connect to a pc that's off and the pc is off so it's also not charging it does tend to be out at the end of the weekend when you haven't used it in a few days so uh in 2020 with my first wireless headset i figured out how they work using my brain um mm -hmm. yeah i'm pretty intelligent what can i say yeah i did realize that uh you know going for long trips on a plane that if i turn on my bluetooth headset at the airport in adelaide by the time i reach poland it will be flat <laughs> exactly um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah oh my god i have uh, i have learned that one the hard way for